Hello! Hello! Welcome to Queers Gone By. My name is Kate Butch. And I'm Caitlin Powell. And this is the podcast where we revisit films, TV, all the experiences from our childhood, have a bit of a nostalgia trip and find out if that's what made us queer. Today uh, we are exploring one of our favourite TV shows uh, that I haven't seen in a good long time. No, it's... <laughs> it's been a moment. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a, a moment. Uh, but first, shall we have our nostalgic refreshment of yes. the day? Yeah. We've gone... A very old school. This is this is a nostalgia trip. It's the very, smell of it. The smell is I'm emanating. Back. I'm on a school trip and someone's throwing like <laughs> crisps at me. We did. Um, we we looked high and low in Tesco for carton versions of this, but we did just have to go for the big bottle. Yeah. Um, Caitlin, what what are we drinking? We're drinking strawberry ribena. Strawberry ribena. <laughs> strawberry ribena. <laughs> Shall we have a bit of a pour? Yeah. Do you want? Oh, ASMR. Oh. Oh, hello. Oh. All the tingles, all the sensations. It's... <laughs> uh, for those of you who can't see what we're doing, this Ribena is... It's an almost offensive shade of red. <laughs> it is. Um, I mean, I think it's an all It looks Ribena. a bit like a cranberry juice. Yes, it's dripping. slightly... Ooh. Slightly more luminous, if yeah. that makes sense. Um, and it smells more luminous. Oh yes, we just some, like little sommeliers that we are. Should we have a cheers? Cheers. Oh, oh. I think I think I made that too strong. No, that's quite it's good straight. You're right it's, with that. Yeah, okay. I don't like it too watery. It's it's very sweet. It's so sweet. But it it it's bringing back a lot of memories. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I would have this in like a school trip, in a school trip, in a spat lunch. Yeah. Um. After swimming. After swimming, After swimming. Um, but always in a carton. Mm. I'd know. I'd like. Yeah. We'd never have it. We bought it in a we'd... bottle, with, which might be dangerous. <laughs> we can definitely have a yeah. lot more. It's a big We're bottle. We're going to be fizzy with excitement. Did they do other? Did they do an orange one? They did for a bit. I, I thought think it was I'm... illegal. <laughs> that was Sunny Delight. Sunny Delight. Okay. <gasps> Sun... We should try a Sunny. I've, can I've you never... still get Sunny Delight? I. Th- Oh, they call it Sunny it. D now, and it's kind of like, oh, we're healthy. It's not Vitamin like, C. It's not what it was. No. As in, it's not going to give us diabetes? I don't know. Probably. What did it do? Oh, okay. no, E numbers. E number. Did it make your skin luminous, or was that a... That's carrots. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's seeing in the dark. Yeah, I think something to do with that. Oh. I don't know. But yeah, it's yeah, nice. It's, it's good. good. Um, I rate it. I liked the Blackberry one, black current one. Mm-hmm. A Blackberry one. That's me being <laughs> terribly middle class. Um, you know what they have done? I've just remembered. A mango one. A mango Ribena. I'm fairly sure. Get out. That's not right. Am I thinking... I think I'm... A, a trop- it's tropical. Tropical? Yeah. Ooh. It works. Listeners, if you've had the tropical Ribena, yeah. do write in. Or maybe I'm thinking of an Oasis. Oasis is a cinema drink. I've, oh, I think of a Tango Ice Blast as a cinema drink. Oh, yeah, that's the OG. But I had parents who were very strict about what <laughs> drinks I would have My at parents cinema. did not give <laughs> two shits. They were like, have all this sugar. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's no added sugar, apparently, yeah. in this Ribena. I mean, I should say, I'm an only child with very controlling parents. So I've had none of these drinks and seen none of the films that you've seen, at least. I see, yeah, me and my sister were left to a lot of devices... With, like, some weird old BBC shit. Yeah. Whereas my parents were like, the Shawshank Redemption! <laughs> <laughs> no, my parents would not like that at all. Um, this has no added sugar, but it has a lot of sweeteners. And in bold, it says sodium bisulfate, which can only be good for you. Yeah. That sounds like what you clean your teeth with. Clean your toilet with. Yeah, toilet yeah. or teeth. Yeah, well, hopefully we'll have bright, sparkling white teeth by the end of this Ribena. Should we talk about what we, what we just watched? <laughs> what you mean that psychological horror it is very harrowing yeah and there's well let's say what we watched first we did watch the seminal bbc television program the story of tracy beaker she can make her world come true <laughs> all her dreams will see her through. you know it doesn't matter so what, what may come, come her way believe her now she'll win someday. she will win someday yes oh i mean i'm not wrong it is harrowing. It's really sad. It's there's so some, sad. There's, so, um, I'd forgotten this bit, that they have a lot of um, the animation in it. Yeah, which comes across like the grandiose delusions of someone with severe mental health problems <laughs> on some kind of acid trip. 
Yes, she's a, not a well child. No, Tracy Beaker. Not, none of them are well. I I'd forgotten they did the like it's like like uh, Lizzie McGuire. Do you remember Lizzie McGuire? And I've never seen Lizzie McGuire. Never, so occasionally okay. she has like yeah. an animated persona that comes yes. up and's like, lol, isn't the basketball player yeah. really fit? She's more sarky. Tracy, yes. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of the time in the two episodes that we watched, um, because they're fifteen minute episodes, so we thought we'd watch two. Yes. Um. It, when they did the animation, they then cut to what really happened, and it's in like a bleak kind yeah. of, kind of slightly greyed, yeah, grey toned, sepiary, and it's just misery and of it's her just... being told we don't love you anymore or opening eating... a can of beans. I thought it was a can of dog food. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's clearly the beans with the sausage. But they'd taken the label off because it was the BBC. Oh sure, I just feel like beans with the sausage is a like, you're vegetarian. I'm a vegan. Well, yes, but you, you childhood, you were childhood. Veg- I was vegetarian, yeah. yeah. So I didn't really know what was. I just like, that's dog food. Yeah. Any brown meat in a can. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're much of a muchness. I'm going to be honest. I accidentally okay. bought one the other day, and I was like, I'll just nibble it. A sausage and beans in a can. Yeah, because I wanted beans, but I accidentally bought the sausage oh, and beans. Oh, that's... And I nibbled it, and I was like, this is not. That's so sad. It was horrible. S- cold as well. I bet Tracy Beaker's beans were cold. Yeah. Oh, They'd... they were. Oh, yeah. She hadn't microwaved that. She ate it out the can. Out the... She just opened the I can. I had an ex that did that. Cold beans. In front of me. Honestly, beans give me like. <laughs> oh, they make me feel like a bit this... ill. Oh, okay. What? Why? I've never liked baked beans. Oh. I like actual like beans, like kidney beans. Um, All right, Mark. Beans in a nice Chianti. If you want to spell out that you're middle class. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I think it's a tomato sauce because I don't like spaghetti oh. hoops either. What the fuck? <laughs> Apologies to listeners. No, <laughs> Just no, 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 no. Slam her Ribena onto the table. Human. But yeah. But what do you, what do you put on toast if you're feeling sad? My own tears. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Um, I like a jam. Uh, oh, we're talking warm. Warm. But well, I used to like cheese on toast. You can kind of have cheese on toast now. Um. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, listeners. Uh, but just baked beans make me feel a bit ill. Um, I don't know if I can continue with this. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, no, Tracy Beaker. Um, so, yeah, it occasionally has these really harrowing moments. Because yeah. if you haven't seen Tracy Beaker, basically, uh, where have you been the whole yeah, time? Yeah, like, well... If you're from abroad, we don't know. Yeah. Um, but uh, she is... Uh, living in a children's home. Mm-hmm. The Dumping Ground. The Dumping Ground is what they call it. Which I hope isn't its actual name. No, it's called like something house. They did have a little poster on the notice okay. board. At one point she yells at her foster like parents, you're not taking me back to the Dumping Ground and there is no reaction. <laughs> Just none. Just blank stares. Those foster parents were... Those foster mm. parents? Why is it a normal man and like some art collector <laughs> who wanders in? <laughs> She's got this like sharp bob and a severe expression and i'm like you work in mayfair what is happening <laughs> it's bizarre it's bizarre julie ted and julie ted and julie bastards um but the uh, the um episode the first episode begins i think with quite a is good camera work i would say well this is what made me think of a horror film it is a shaky but yeah. emotive emotive you know like in the classic like <laughs> film canon like um, revealing characters, yes, and how what you see when you first see. There the were character. a lot of good reveals. There were some absolutely stellar reveals, and we I think as a first it. episode, it does really set up some of the fabulous. It does cliches and tropes mm-hmm. and of the genre of the genre and everything we know and love about Tracy Big, but we yeah. will get to that. Yes, um, but yeah, the first shot is a wobbly camera <laughs> towards the dumping ground yeah. um, as she's being dragged. No, she's well, she's, she's dragging them yeah. back to the dumping ground. Well, she knows what she wants. And she, she knows does. she knows betrayal when she sees it. She that does. is one thing we can say about Tracy. <laughs> Tracy Beaker knows what she wants and she knows how to get it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and she says things like, You your house smells of sick or whatever. <laughs> your house smells of wet dog. Wet dog. Wet dog. Which is funny because I don't think they had a dog. No, they had a child on the way, which I think is why they sent her back. Which is like That's really sad. Bad. That, they could have had both. Especially since one's an art Actually, collector. Actually, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust Tracy Beaker <laughs> no. near a child. No, not Like at a baby. All. Yeah, no, she'd, she'd drop kick it. <laughs> <laughs> like that snuff box sketch. <laughs> Wait, do, do you know what I mean by the snuff box sketch? Where no. Matt Berry just goes, fuck you, and kicks things. No. Okay, well, 
Okay. Okay. I imagine she'd kick the baby, but she'd kick it through that arty Nick Sharer animation. Yes. Mm. Yes. Have you read the book, by the way? The Jacqueline Wilson original? I think I was a big fan of Jacqueline Wilson. Mm. I remember at one point I was getting a bit angsty because I was about... I don't know. I was a teenager. And mum was like, I saw that Jacqueline Wilson you read. <laughs> it's true. I. What are those sad white girls? Yeah. The... Why do you think I empathise? <laughs> I really saw myself as Tracy Beaker, which is sad because I have a very loving family. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite trait, tra- tra- Jacqueline Wilson, was um, Midnight. Did you read Midnight? Mm. Oh my God. It was about this gothy girl and she loved fairies and there were like fairies going on. Oh, no, I didn't and there was like some like basically an author of Twilight or whatever, mm-hmm. and she was like in, like in love with him, and he wrote books about fairies. Right. Midnight, a good one. Okay, I feel like her. Her is she? Okay? I want to know if Jacqueline Wilson's okay. She's got like a damehood. I think she's doing alright for herself. No, I don't mean financially. I mean <laughs> psychologically. Yeah, just because I feel like they got a bit bleak. Oh, they did. The suitcase kid. That was really sad. Yes, I remember that. Um, dustbin baby. Illustrated yeah. Mum. Did you watch that? Illustrated TV? Mum mm. was the best. I didn't know it was on TV. It was with her off the Golden Compass, Dakota Blue Richards. And she was she, the mum? No, she was the daughter. Oh. And the mum was someone else. God, because that's how acting is... works. Oh. That's the two things that she's done. Oh, and that other one, Moonacre. She's in a creepy house. I know a lot about her career. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't good in the first one. Like. No, she wasn't. <laughs> Never mind. Stop giving her chances. <laughs> but yeah, so in the book, um, I did a bit of a gasp. Oh, oh we're, I'm, we're jumping around, but... Yeah. Um, Justine Littlewood. The Queer a- icon Justine Littlewood. Queer icon <laughs> Justine Littlewood. Her full title, please. Justine Littlewood's a dom top. She is. Absolutely. Oh, Justine Littlewood is at Pussy Palace every <laughs> Friday night. Or is Justine Littlewood a power bottom? I, I don't know. <laughs> I think... Tracy Beaker's a lesbian as well. Oh, fully. Sure. Yeah. I mean, she's not quite a queer icon. No. But Justine Littlewood is like... She's... Well, I was going to say... she's a pansexual goddess. Yes. Um, Tracy Beaker, I would like to imagine, now lives... Uh, we know what happens, but I'd like to imagine she lives in, like, the Lake District and has, like, ten dogs. Yeah. I but see that for she her. she doesn't. She's... Because Jacqueline Wilson wrote... She wrote a new one and she's got a daughter... Yeah, no, she's a, yeah, she's a single mum. Yeah. And it's really sad. I haven't read it. I haven't read it either, I, I just... I'd forgotten that they weren't... They didn't know each other yes. in the first episode. That I thought should... we just jumped straight back into Justine and Tracy's uh, feud. Yeah, and they go zero to a hundred real oh, quick. fully. Absolutely. It's, with Justine, like, she's sitting there with Louise, and they are just having a lovely time reading magazines, very chill, and you think, oh... Justine is not as bad as I thought she was. And then within five minutes, it's like, I'm going to slap you. It is <laughs> a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, th- there's... So, the well, the drama begins because Tracy goes immediately up to her room. Which is now being occupied yeah. by Justine. And is a green screen, apparently. <laughs> I was, this is an aggressive... I was, I, when she came in and she was like, oh... I, I thought like, they'd be decorated. I thought she was like, why have you painted this, this, this horrible, horrifying yeah. shade of green? Yeah. Um, but no, it's, they've just put different things on the shelves. And Justine yeah. now lives there. Mm-hmm. Um, including on the shelves is Justine's clock. This yes. is what I was talking about. In the book, I'm 100% sure it's a Mickey Mouse clock. Oh. And there's a lot about the Mickey Mouse clock. Right. Um, and it's arms and things. But in this, but it's, it's Catwoman. A, like, With a sexy latex lady. Like, <laughs> feline woman. <laughs> feline woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, so Tracy spins around the hands of the clock and they snap off. Yes. A, Why sh- would you do that? But still, it's a shoddily made clock. Yes. That's so what the hands are for. one thing we learn quite quickly is that Tracy Beaker is a bad person. Yes, that's correct. Like, But we do learn that Tracy Beaker does have behavioural issues. Because of the line, I wrote it down. I'm difficult and I've got some behavioural problems. And I was like, pitch same. (laughs) Same. Oh, because there's that horrible moment where she really wants the man to adopt her. Mike. Mike. Hot daddy Mike. Excuse you. No, here's here's a bucket load of tea for you. Okay. Mike, who works at the care home, Mm -hmm. is fit. Oh, right. I thought there was more. (laughs) No, no. Do Do you agree that Mike is fit? No. It's that Irish accent. He's 
He's a bit I like, want him to adopt me. He's a kind of a father figure, so that's like a lot I of want my him own to psychological be my issues. daddy, but not my daddy, right? I'll have him be both, okay. honestly. Um, yeah, and she's trying to get him to adopt her, and he's like, lol, no. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're a mess. <laughs> you are awful. I just think Tracy Beaker is not getting the care and attention and help no, that she deserves. One thing I did real like, I don't think adults in that industry are supposed to go on as much as these adults do about admin to children. <laughs> Like, Jenny is really stressed. Jenny who runs the care home. Jen, sorry, yes, Jenny who runs the who care home. Who has started running the care home since Tracy left because they didn't know each other. I didn't clock that. Clock. Sorry. <laughs> the clock. <laughs> the clock. So the clock is Justine Littlewood's dad's present yes, to her. Which is weird, but... But Justine Littlewood's dad gets her presents all the time to, like, make up for being a terrible dad. Yes. Um, do, do you remember the episode with the, um, the mini TV? Oh, no, I don't. There's an episode with a mini-TV that Justine's dad buys her a mini-TV, and I'm fairly sure Tracy breaks that as well. <sighs> Tracy. Trace, she just wants a father figure, and Big it's Daddy Mike. It's homophobic. <laughs> Can't that to Queer Icon Justine Littlewood. <laughs> Justine Littlewood deserves far better. Yeah. She does, deserves far better than that friend Louise. Oh, I think Louise is the only one that's stable. Oh, I put that Louise was trash. <laughs> Lu- Louise is a garbage person. Louise? Just picks and chooses between her friends, and that's not great. But at the end, well, we'll get there. Yeah, Louise has. She's. I think Louise is one of the better actors. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a lot of acting going on. There's, I'm they've not sure definitely if it's been good. plucked from like the Sylvia Young School or the Pauline yes. Quirk Academy of yes. tiny children being all teeth. <laughs> <laughs> In Tracy Beaker's case, being a lot of chin. <laughs> There's a lot of chin, There's a lot a of chacting. Lot. Chacting? Chin acting. I love that. Or child acting, whichever you wish. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of, we are on TV. Yes. Oh, there's a lot of, um, ah, oh, the way she says, I'm Tracy Beaker, tra- when she introduces herself, is exactly the same way Rupert Grint says, Ron Weasley. <laughs> Tracy Beaker. And they yes. do a really firm handshake. Yes. With him off Harry Potter. Um... He's Lee... Someone. Dawson? No, he does the Rue Caps. <laughs> Lee. L- L- Lee. Lee. Oh, he does the commentary. He does the commentary over the Quidditch. He does not Isn't do the Rue Caps. his surname Lee? No, it's not. His name is Jordan. Lee, Lee Jordan. Lee Jordan. There it sounds like Lee Dawson. Yes. Shout out to Lee Dawson. Shout out to Lee Dawson. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Ben with the eyebrow. Oh, we are not even there yet. Oh, I'm so sorry. We... I'm just jumping around. All around. I mean, actually, maybe capital letters acting a lot of acting i like ben i like ben ben i see i went on imdb mm-hmm. aside from danny harmer and her off eastenders no danny harmer is tracy beaker yes but she went on eastenders she, she was on strictly she's 30 <gasps> no she has a three-year-old child uh, no i can't that's not this mm. episode aired originally in 2002 so upsetting. 2002. We were five, six? Five slash six. <gasps> oh no. Horrible. Well, you know what happens before Ben? Yeah. What? Duke. Duke! Oh my god, Duke. I forgot about Duke. Duke's amazing. Duke's fabulous. Duke is giving me a lot of Anthony from Queer Eye. <laughs> like, there are just moments where I'm like, Duke's not okay. <laughs> Duke needs to simmer down. But Duke's clearly gay as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is Tracy Beaker an LGBTQ like TV show? We've got the whole spectrum, yeah. almost. The, yeah, we need some trans people. Yes. But I think that might happen later. Yeah, why not? It's fabulous, and it it's is. later. It's got a disability representation with the character of Layla. Who's Layla? I think she has cerebral palsy. Oh my god! But she's fabulous. She's a straight up bitch. I love that. We stand. Oh, you know who I stand? Who do you stand? The kid who is basically your dad's mate down the pub. <laughs> the tiny cockney child. The tiny cockney child. Like, all right, we'll fix the clock up for you. Yeah. Give it's... us give us your pocket money. Oh, oh wait, that's... first one's on the house. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> He's fabulous. I love him. He... And his brother. Uh, bro- friend brother. The less important one. They're, I think they're a prototype for Bouncer and Lol. Do you remember Bouncer and Lol from the later episodes? No. They were brothers. I definitely watched Tracy Beaker religiously. I can't remember any of this. Bouncer and Lol, they were there. Um, who else was in it? So Crash. They... Jumper Crash. 
Crash was, I was... I remember Crash, yes. I was very attracted to Crash as a child. Does he have a bit of a Mike TV vibe? No, he's got anger issues. Oh, yeah, so a Mike TV vibe. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. So, was if Jackie. We're talking... Jackie was sporty. She was a lesbian. The foster mum? No, that's Cam. Cam is a lesbian. <laughs> Cam's probably a lesbian. Yeah. Jackie, she, her grandpa was like an Olympian. And there's an episode where they get all these old, old men running around. Oh. And Jackie's always in a tracksuit, so like that speaks volumes. Yes. Hmm. But yeah, there's a bouncer and a lot, and there's <laughs> yes. a tiny cockney children. Yes. There's also Peter. Who's Peter? Peter is in the episode we watched. Oh, damn. Oh, the little curly Peter's boy. Peter's little curly boy with um, teeth. <laughs> he's got a lot. Yeah. He's, got, he's missing teeth. And they're all very Prominent. separate. Yes. <laughs> There's lots of gaps. Yes. Um, I mean, he's like seven. He, he's, yeah, maybe even less than that. But he's, yeah. he's got a nan. I remember he's got, his, his nan is really old. And there's an episode where she dies. Oh, they tend to. Yeah. <laughs> Those pesky nans. <laughs> just dropping like flies. Pesky nan. <laughs> um, um, yeah, Peter's there. He's really cute. He's a bit of a, he's, he's a bit of like a goody two shoes. Is it in Ed, Ed and Eddie where there's a curly-haired little wet kid? I don't know. Um, there's Perfect Peter in Horrid Henry, who's a very similar character yes. type. Yes. Well, I think oh, this character is in a lot of different things. Curly, angelic-haired... With a nan. With a nan who died. <laughs> Dead nan. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I remember that being quite a, like, a harrowing oh, thing. Because it's kind of like... It kind of teaches of, you about life Yeah, lessons. a lot of yeah. kids, that'll be their first experience yeah. with death. Yeah. Um, and brushes with broken clocks. Mm-hmm. Is that a metaphor? And homelessness. We'll get to it. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> Is Ben homeless? No, there's an episode where he's got a house and he's got a family. Okay, but he keeps saying, welcome but to my house. But he keeps like, I'm homeless. And yeah. I'm sure there's an episode where Tracy oh, Beaker's she finds like, out and it's like, she goes you're into his not house and homeless. She's like, you were lying the whole time. Yeah. And then I he thought also... you were so cool because you were homeless. <laughs> he also DJs at her birthday party. Of course he does. <laughs> I mean, you saw his phone. He he's, got a ph- he's got a Nokia. Yeah. And he it plays made... Snake and everything. B- b- bounce. Bounce? Do you remember Bounce? No, is that just a... B- you know, you're like a balls. And you... <laughs> you're a ball. They tend to and... bounce. <laughs> and it's like you're going down little platforms. Oh. I'm barely sure it's called Bounce. Snake that. and Bounce. They and were it's... the prominent games. Mm. Nostalgia. Oh, look, yeah. it's got Rabina, Trace Beaker, and a bounce. Nokia phone. <laughs> But yeah, Ben, I don't think, is homeless eventually. Sorry to ruin it for anyone who's Shall not... Shall we explain Ben, though, first? Because she runs away. Oh, she runs away. There is yeah. no security None at whatsoever. that house. I mean, it's 2002, and yeah. we're not as I don't think you're scared. allowed to lock kids away. Well, you probably should be if they're, like, under your care. Yeah. I wouldn't say lock away. I'd be like, keep an eye on but who's like, coming and going in the house. You're not... You're, not, you're supposed to let cats out, you know. That's true, but I, they have, like, a play area. They have a pitch. A what? They have like a football pitch. Do they? That's where they fix the clock. Oh yeah, true. First one's on the house. <laughs> <laughs> what is this house? Is it London? They've got some. Of, most of them have got southern accents. Hmm. And there's the small Cockney children. And there's the small Cockney children, but Duke is from the north. Hmm. <gasps> People move. People do. People do move. Yes. Um, we did. I'd forgotten about. They mention someone in the episode. Uh huh. But who doesn't appear. Right. But she is the mo- probably the most iconic. Uh, you know what? I know who you're going to say. They do. There's a bit where they're like, watch out, because I don't want to have to talk to Elaine. Elaine the, the Pain. Pain. Yeah. I love Elaine the Pain. I don't remember her at all, but I remember the name. I was like, She was <gasps> absolutely fabulous. Fear and, of God. Uh, there's an episode of Doctor Who where she's in it and she gets exterminated. Who is she? She's just like a side character, but I was like, oh, oh my God, God, it's Elaine. <laughs> Kill her. <laughs> Is it in the episode where the Cybermen and... No, it's the TV one where there's like Weakest Link and stuff. Oh. I'm such a loser. Great episode, though. Great episode, though. We should rewatch that. We should. Trip. And then uh, Captain Jack gets naked. Oh, my God, sexy Captain Jack. Yeah, and he's like, hello, ladies. And I, I remember being about... Your viewing figures just went up. How old were we? Like, 10, 12? Uh, it's 2005, so yeah. Yeah. Nine, I remember watching nine. that. I was watching that like, I don't think that's appropriate. Eight. No, we're eight because we're born eight. in July, yeah. Wait, do you know the month it came out? I, I remember Doctor Who always came out around April time. Wow. I'm such a fucking loser. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Classic me. Yep. But anyway, that's for a different episode to talk yeah. about Doctor Who. Then, she runs away. She runs away. And she's in the town centre. Yeah. Which is a very conspicuous place to run away to. Mm. I feel like it's probably like a town 
like just outside London. Maybe like Surrey. Yeah. I got very, I got big Surrey vibes. Big Surrey. <laughs> big Surrey energy. <laughs> BSV. Big Surrey vibes. <laughs> um, and yeah, so she's in the town centre, and then so. It's a an small artful child. dodger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's basically the first, like, it's the, Oliver. Yeah. He's one step away from singing Consider Yourself. Yes. And he comes over and offers her a picnic bar. Mm. Was it a picnic bar? A selection of or bars. Or was it a topic in... bar? I think it was a picnic. Okay. I don't know the difference, really. I've never seen a topic in my life. I think topics always used to come in celebrations, and then they got phased out and replaced by the Maltesers Teasers. The best one. The best one? Yeah. Is it similar to a bounty? Well, I've never seen one, so I wouldn't know. I don't know what I, I think it's like orangey coloured. Anyway, it's a picnic bar. Mm-hmm. It, I think What's that in a pi- Is that peanuts? Nuts, yes. Nuts and chocolates. Nuts and chocolates. And she eats the chocolate. She and gets, gets it, it all everywhere. Right her mouth. Absolute scenes. <laughs> She's a mess. Absolute mess. Her mum did not her teach her how to eat chocolate before no. she ran away no. to Hollywood. That's quite sad. She's That's... convinced that... Well, she, don't these are the grandiose delusions of a girl in trouble. Mm-hmm. And she keeps telling Ben all of these things. Like and, she is... and also she keeps standing up and almost like comically walking to the side. She looks and, like, in the middle yeah, distance. Yeah. And then like the voiceover happens. Yeah, and then Ben's just like, what the f- Ben's like, you're just a liar. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds fake, but okay. <laughs> Sounds fake, but sure. Um, love that for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tracy, live your dreams. Yes. Um, but yeah, Ben. Oh, while we're on her mum. Can we talk about how her mum is J.K. Rowling? Her mum looks exactly like J.K. Rowling. Yeah. Did you see Tracy Beaker, the movie of me? You know, I probably did. It was on CBBC, uh, the height of summer, I remember, one year. Okay. And it was the Tracy Beaker feature length presentation. Her mum is very disappointing, right? Her mum comes back. Yes. And they're all like, oh my God, what's Hollywood like? And she's like, what? I live like round the corner. Oh no. It's very sad. Um, Just lie. Just lie, Mum. Say you live in Glasgow. Just don't come back. Yeah, just fuck off. Fuck off, Mum. Fuck off, Jacob Rowling. Potter. Yeah. <laughs> Go write Lee Dawson into your yeah. Quidditch matches. This is why all her characters are now gay. Well, they're not, but... Well, they're retroactively gay, aren't they? Yeah. Mm. But she went to the dumping ground and was like, Eh, like... <laughs> First one's on the house. <laughs> he's my favourite. Oh, he's amazing. I don't... Yeah, I don't really remember him in later seasons. Serieses. Sorry. British. Is that kid... Has he become a, an act like a proper actor? I go- I did IMDb him. Yeah. Oh, here's what I was saying about IMDb. Uh, ben, apart aside from Danny and Justine, mm-hmm. he's the only one with a picture on IMDb. Oh. The other ones are not famous enough. I think Ben is the, is the true talent of this episode. Yeah. Well, he got to call the Quidditch matches later on. Yeah. So. What's he um, done since then? No idea. Okay. Probably nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, the the one that plays the Cockney Child mm-hmm. was in the Sarah Jane Adventures. Love that. Which I. I think we also should. Oh, we! I was obsessed I with the Sarah, the Sarah Jane Adventures. <gasps> oh, what Rest in peace. R.I.P. Elizabeth Lady. Oh, Queen. Oh, oh, so sad. Bradley Walsh is in that. Oh no. He plays an evil clown. Ah, he's the clown. It's what? great. I hate that. Yeah, it's very scary. Um, mm. but no, yeah, he was in the Sarah Jane Adventures and maybe like one other thing. Oh. But yeah, mm. just just the Trace Trace Beaker. Once well, once you've done Tracy Beaker. Where do you go from there? I don't know. There's no. Well, we've realised in terms of our our thesis question. Yeah. We have realised it's made us gay. I think it was a very strong contribution. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we've um, got Justine. We've got Duke. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. A lot of queer people. Tracy herself. Tracy herself. Queer people not so much succeeding. No. Duke ovens a very popular pizza. It is. He's got. It does a lovely. <laughs> Pot's a very nice pizza in the oven and everyone has a bit. I, I feel like Justine is succeeding. I think she's thriving. <laughs> Justine eventually thrives, doesn't she? I feel. I've got no because idea. there's loads of sequels to this. There's like Tracy Beaker Returns and The Dumping Ground. How old was Danny Har- Harmer? Danny Harmer? Yeah. How old was she when she last did it? I don't, I don't think it's very long ago. What, like 20s? Yeah. Wow. There was definitely one on CBBC after I stopped watching CBBC, which admittedly was very late for me. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty one. <It's> <laughs> no, um, no, they did. They did do like a few extra series in like recent years. Wow. Um, but I think Tracy's runs the dumping ground in the sequels. Oh, I Question hate mark. That. And Justine's occasionally there to be like, "Ah, oh, yeah, you're a slag." I mean, my favorite bit of Justine. It's like I want to give her a right slap. That was amazing. 
Fabulous. Also, right, so back to the narrative. She runs away. Oh, yeah, sorry. It takes them a while to give a shit. Like, <laughs> Mike is driving around not that concerned. No, he's like, oh, Tracy, where are you? Where have you got to? Oh, no. Um, I think they, they drag her back to the dumping ground. I believe we get the first moment of bog off. I think we do. Which is... Iconic. Iconic. Bog off a lane. Bog off a lane. Oh. I think we should bring back Bog off. Yes. We also get another horror moment when... Wait, they've put Tracy in a room and Louise has a little standoff with her. Oh, that's towards the end, yes. Yeah. They put Tracy in like an isolation room and Peter comes in and is like, are you crying, Tracy? Yeah. And Tracy's like, I'm not crying. It's just the dumping ground dust. And I'm thinking of going. a different bit when they first bring her back. Um, oh, okay. she's run away. Louise is there. Uh, Louise, right? The yeah. blonde one. Yes. Louise is there. And they have this standoff. But again, it's this shaky camera. I thought, <laughs> I thought she's going to pull a knife on her. It's so intense. And then she just like throws Louise on the bed and... Oh, and they're like, help, help. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, but no, yeah, the dumping ground dust. That's another iconic moment. Yes. We've had... In the first episode, we've got Elaine... We've got bog off, mm-hmm. and we've got dumping ground dust. Yeah, this is a perfect first episode. Mm. Oh, we haven't even talked about her apology. Oh to my god, Justine. So Jenny, who runs the dumping ground, mm-hmm. very poorly. She's it's just... so stressful doing all this admin. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> that is your job. Yes, all right, Jenny. <laughs> I've got I'm... to change my Excel spreadsheet <laughs> yeah, because you've got a social life. Yeah. It's ridiculous. We yeah. we don't stand Jenny. We don't. I think she gets replaced by Mike. And there's also Nate. Remember Nathan? No. He was like young and beautiful. Oh. He was semi attractive, I okay. think. Um, and I can't remember who else worked at the dumping ground. The Duke's there the whole time. And Elaine pops in occasionally. But yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Jenny is like, you need to apologise to Justine. <laughs> I empathise so much with this apology. Remind me what Tracy does. Tracy, they're all having dinner or something. And Tracy (laughs) runs in and just goes, I'm sorry! And I was like, bitch, me too. The fuck? (laughs) And they're like, you didn't mean that. (laughs) And she's like, what? (laughs) Of course I did. I I was like, I know you. (laughs) I love Tracy. Oh my God. And then later on where she actually gives the actual apology. Yes, but it's more like, my mum's great. (laughs) Wait, is, that, is there another apology after that? She gets on the roof of Jenny's car with a megaphone oh, yeah. and's like, Justine Littlewood, Tracy Beaker apologises for what she has done to you. In I'm sorry about witnesses. your clock. <laughs> in front of all these witnesses. And then Jenny's oh. like, get off my car. She's like, Jenny, in front of all these witnesses, I oh. apologise to you for getting on the car. And then she jumps. <laughs> And the the freeze frame is just before the ideal point. (laughs) Yes. Like, you know when when, um, you're about, like, 15 and you're on a beach with your friends? Yeah. And you did a jump. (laughs) And one one person is like, oh, (laughs) that's what it is. Tracy Beaker's the one person. Tracy Beaker is the Um, one person. And then the credits roll, and that's the end of that episode. episode. Um, But it is kind of a two-parter. Yes. Because they're only 15 minutes long. Yes. The second one involves... Gum. Gum. (laughs) It's a really horrible bit. But Justine Littlewood has some gum yeah. and she won't share it with Tracy. <laughs> and Tracy goes, Oh, look, there's your dad. And then she just turns around and Tracy steals the gum. He goes, Mmm, strawberry, my favourite. <laughs> it's just so cruel. It's horrible. Because Justine Littlewood looks so excited that her dad's there. Yeah. Justine Littlewood worships her dad. And she really shouldn't. She really should. Her dad is trash garbage. And I think he gets Get... recast in a later episode. Get yourself to Pussy Palace, find yourself a mum. <laughs> Justine. Oh. oh but look. also, Louise just goes off with Tracy. Louise is a snake in the grass. She is. Louise needs to choose who her friends... I know that she was friends with Tracy before Tracy left. Yeah. And then she became friends with Justine because Tracy never called. Yeah, they're acting like Tracy did nothing wrong there. And I'm like, well, Tracy. I mean, Tracy may not have been allowed to have called her. We never know. We don't know what kind they're of MySpace. dictatorship Ted and what's a face art dealer were running. <laughs> yeah, Julie. They did not have MySpace in two thousand and two. Did they not? I never had MySpace. Well, they were also maybe like ten, and okay. they wouldn't have had a comp. They probably didn't have a computer. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. No. We do- we don't know the lives of these people. We don't. There's always someone worse off than yourself. <laughs> it's usually Tracy Beaker. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, the yeah. second episode. 
Louise what in this episode? dicks about. I honestly am unsure. Um, um she meets Duke... Ben. She speaks to Ben again. Yes. She tells Ben that she lives in like a high security computer lab or whatever. Yeah. Um, she does not. Duke does this pizza business. The not mouse a business. business oh, is... there's a mouse business. Duke puts a pizza in the oven. There's also a mouse. Yeah. And he, there's a so he goes mice. Yeah, it's very mice. much when. The kid was annoying Anthony on Queer Eye and he looked like he was going to kill the kid. <laughs> That's the vibe. Duke is a loose cannon. He is. Um, do you remember the episode? His little... Like, probably not. Oh, okay. <laughs> but... I, I have a really good memory for you really do. random shit. I think the problem is I have a terrible memory, especially for anything media or cultural. Okay, I can't remember someone's name if they just tell it to me once, but I can remember the exact episode of Tracy Beaker. See, I can I can't remember the exact episode of Tracy Beaker, but if someone tells me their name, I can remember their birthday and their favorite food. Okay. Yeah, it's a bit That's... weird. Good. It's not helpful. Uh, no, but it's more helpful than being like, that reminds me of the Tracy Beaker episode when this happened. It means I can go, "Oh my god, you're coming around. I got pizza." And they're like, "I love pizza." And I'm like, "I know." <laughs> That's quite scary. Yeah. Or I, they, but I they'd I... come around and I'd be like, I've got your pizza. Just like series one, episode two of Tracy Beaker, <laughs> where Duke puts yeah. a pizza in the oven. I mean, and... I have to pretend I don't know. I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> Eat your favourite food. <laughs> but anyway, there's an episode of Tracy Beaker. This is a behind the scenes fun fact oh. of me as a child. Uh-huh. Um, you know in CBBC where they used to run competitions? Yes. And you could phone up yeah. and answer a question mm-hmm. and win a terrible prize. Yes. I was like, I'm going to win this prize. Because there was a question about this episode of Trace Beaker that we just watched on CBBC. What was the question? It's not about this episode of Trace Beaker. Oh, right. It's about an episode, the episode that had just aired. I see. Um, and it was like, what vegetable is Duke going to put in his thing? Uh-huh. Soup. <laughs> Excuse you? <laughs> what episode is Duke going to put in his soup or whatever? Yeah. And the answer is Duke doing a really creepy version. He says, ladies' fingers. <laughs> what I think it's like okra. I don't know. No. It's that kind of family. What? Um, and then, who had like, all the okra? kids are like, "Oh my god, Duke's eating fingers." I'm sorry. Who had okra in 2002? I don't know. Was it? Is it also asparagus? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Duke's a you wizard in the kitchen. You wouldn't put asparagus in a soup. I'm oh, sorry. Duke's not a wizard in the kitchen. Duke <laughs> peeked at a vinegar pizza. Um, <laughs> he did, and he's acting like it's his life's work. <laughs> anyway, but I phoned show. up. Yeah. And I was when I got put through and I answered the question, ladies' fingers. <laughs> and they gave me um, an electronic Yahtzee game. I didn't really play it. Cool. I was just I was in it really to hear my voice on TV. Um, my parents As did, with much my, of what you do. <laughs> my parents did record a video of it. Oh, that's sweet. So you could record a VHS from the TV. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just me. <laughs> there's, there's like a whole video of me and my sister appearing on TV in random guises. <laughs> like, really? As a, you know when, when they used to do birthday cards on the TV? What? My sister's maybe third birthday in 98. Uh-huh. Seven, 97. Um, and it's on children's TV and they're like, and here's this person's birthday. Happy oh birthday from all your God. family and they love you. My sister's in one of those cards I and I'm also there. <laughs> wow. like, little baby me. Uh, yeah. It's really cute. Um, but yeah, uh, there's a whole VHS of just me and my sister appearing on TV at random points. Huh. It's quite strange. Were you the green giant kid? I was the green giant kid. I was the voice of the green giant kid. Because you weren't cute enough to be the. Because I was just really ugly. I was a, I was a cute (laughs) blonde child. Yeah, I was gonna say I know that to be false. I could have been the cute blonde child on the TV. Yeah. But they because I live in well my home home is in Derbyshire, Mm -hmm. so they saw that I was from the north. So they're like, oh, you've got a northern accent. Don't know why I don't have a northern accent. Pretentious parents probably. Um, but yeah, and then. So I went and did, my mum says you are what you eat. If I eat iceberg lettuce, I'll become an iceberg. If I eat egg soldiers, I'll become a soldier. And then the... If I eat a drag queen. No, the last line of the advert is like the coda after all the ho, ho, ho. Yeah. Um, and um, I had the last line, it's like a dot, dot, dot line at the end. And yeah. the line is, so if I eat a fairy cake, dot, <gasps> dot, dot. A bit casually homophobic. Sure. 100% accurate. Yeah. It's bizarre. That's that they would not get away with that now. And actually, sorry, are you saying that it's interesting that a young boy into acting turned out to be gay? Because if you are, I have some news and some receipts. A young boy with an encyclopedic knowledge of the story of Tracy Beaker. Yes. <laughs> Scratch that. All of Jacqueline Wilson's works yes. and their derivative media. <laughs> 
What a shocker. What? That I turned out the <laughs> way I did it. <laughs> yeah. Atrocious. I've got, I've got where we were talking talk about, um, talk about green pizza, giant. Juice. Pizza, ladies' fingers. Ladies' fingers. <laughs> ladies' um, fingers. Mouse, there's a mouse. Oh, there's a mouse. There's a whole storyline with a mouse. Yeah. Um, they and they're like, they're, don't kill the mouse. Yeah, and then they want to keep it as a pet, and then they don't, and then... Oh, and there's... Duke's going to kill the mouse, and Cockney children oh, are like... Oh, he's like, let's, let's get my mallet, and it's like, <laughs> no. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> I have a, a how, no, I have a friend whose housemate horror story involves a mouse and a mallet. Oh, God. Yeah, you can't just do that in front of children. My mum used to go out on rainy nights uh, with a pair of scissors and cut slugs up in the garden. You've told me that. It's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, and your mummy's lovely. My mum's lovely, but she has this one deep, dark secret. Oh, wow. She never washed Wait, the scissors as, as well. as a kid? So, yeah, by the, by the door outside. Okay. There. Not as an adult. No, no, no. Okay, that's um, fine. On a rainy night, there's, there, was a, like there was a pair of scissors death. on a hook next to our door. <sighs> and it was harrowing because it had bits of dead slug on it. She never rinsed them. That's disgusting. That's a lot to think about. Yeah. But yeah, so they, he's going to kill the mouse, and then the Cockney children try and appeal to his better judgment and be like, but that mouse has got a family. Yeah. We ain't got any families. <laughs> That Please, mouse <laughs> might be somebody's mum. <laughs> well, I don't have a mum. I'm in the dumping ground. And Duke's like, all right, let's let it go. And the mouse definitely comes back in the house. Yeah, they have. They also, I noticed like this mouse is like kind of scurrying, like, but they they were clearly yelling to the actors because their feet are in the background walking towards the door while the mouse scurries towards the house again. And they were clearly like, could you slowly do it slowly? The mouse isn't. Guys, they're, they're walking so slowly. <laughs> it's insane. It's, um, I, I, uh, that poor mouse. Was that mouse trained, do you reckon? I reckon. Because you could get like all those like animal training companies. You can train a mouse. Give... Can you? That's oh, literally a Coraline. Ooh. In Coraline, they have... I've never seen Coraline. It's such a good film. Oh, well, Isn't it terrifying? It's terrifying, but it's such a good film. Oh. What, they have, he has um, Bobinski's Mouse Circus. Ah. And I it, mean, literally there's a whole... That, that's, I mean... Educate. Animal uh, experiments. Amazing Maurice. Oh, revolve. Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. <gasps> that is a nostalgia trip. That's a nostalgia I watched that. Isn't that the most terrifying thing in the I've world? I've not seen the film. I've only re- I read the book in year six. <sighs> okay, we're project. watching that. It is on the level of witches. It is... No, it's worse than the witches. <laughs> it is the most distressing thing. And I watched it like every night when I was about six. Really? Yeah. I think I have the book in my room somewhere. It's, such, it's a good time. We're watching it. It's like, is it like Watership Down? Yeah, but it's also got experimenting on... Yeah. Yeah, and the rats go red-eyed and... Ooh, Scary. It's not on. Maybe I'll watch it. Well, well, we will. We will. Clearly we will. We'll have that with some Ribena. Yeah. Or a different nostalgic snack. Mm-hmm. Um, so Tracy goes and sees Ben again and <gasps> brings... No, no, no. She, she runs off and he just appears. He does appear, so yeah. you can consider yourself. <laughs> yes. In a beaten up top hat <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and britches. Mm. Uh, but um, they have a chat, and she's mm. like, I live in a secret facility. Mm-hmm. Come back to my secret facility. Yeah. Um, and they do. And she's like, Jenny, can Ben come in? And Jenny's like, No. And Tracy's like, She said she can come in. Because Tracy's a pathological liar. She is. Like, everyone keeps saying it. And she's like, No. And it's like, Well, <laughs> stop doing it then. She does have behavioural issues, which yeah. she would if you were a child in care. Yeah, oh. Actually, well, Peter doesn't have behavioural issues. Peter is an angel. An actual angel. He's good as gold. Yeah. Um, but he he's, he's got green, his nan. He could get the green giant roll. Peter would absolutely smash the green giant roll. I could see the pain in your eyes then. <laughs> I believe in Peter. <laughs> it's fine. More it's than you so, believe in yourself. Absolutely. <laughs> That's correct. I mean, all through this episode, you know, we're following the narrative of Tracy, but it's just interlaced with Justine being like, Tracy Beaker! (laughs) Justine has an iconic line in this thing, where she forces Louise to do all the tidy up for her. And then she's like, (laughs) hurry up, I want to get out of these rags. In like a really nice uniform. Those school uniforms, they're they're a nostalgia trip. They are. It's the kind of the red gingham. Yeah. Uh, I remember you could also get the blue ones. With a little cardigan or jumper. Yeah, red cardigan. Uh, You could also get blue ones. Mm -hmm. I remember in my primary school you could at least. I don't know about you. We had blue, yeah. You had blue, yeah, Yeah. you could have blue or red. Um, Oh, we didn't have red. Oh, we had had the choice. I was really uh, jealous of the, I can't remember what the school was called, but like the next door school, which had green. And I look great in green. Well, that's a big shame, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Oh, um, but yeah, those were the fun times. Um, I think she also says the iconic line, you'll be in for it. 
<laughs> is it you'll be for it? Oh, you'll be for it, that's <laughs> it. Because this was written by adults who have never met a child. Absolutely. <laughs> it's written uh, by Cockney adults. <laughs> yeah. We should probably like finish up on what happens. Oh, yeah. She, she brings, brings in... Ben back, yeah. hides him in, his, in a wardrobe. Jenny finds out, and then Tracy Beaker says... Wait, Louise has a redemption. Oh, does she? Oh, Louise. Oh, Louise covers for Tracy. Yeah. By hiding Ben in the wardrobe and yeah. sitting on a bed. Were and you then about to say... Ben's phone goes off, Jenny discovers him, and Tracy Beaker... <laughs> the very... The line that needs unpacking. <laughs> it's the last line of the episode. And again, another horrible freeze frame. Yeah. I can't remember it verbatim. Can you? I think it's just, shoot me after dinner. <laughs> I'm, I'm starving. starving. <laughs> It's so strange. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. Well, there's mainly one. <laughs> if we're honest. <laughs> Why is she being shot? Why is she being shot? Don't shoot Tracy. Don't shoot Tracy. We've got to get several more seasons of this. <laughs> and a lot more spin-offs. Yeah. I... But it's just such a strange line. It's weird to end on it. She doesn't say it with the, the intonation that it's the last line. Yeah, no, she says it with... Cause, like, like, shoot me after dinner, I'm starving. Boom. Doesn't matter what, make, make a bow yeah. it. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's so, it's so strange. Was there more after that? That they were just like, oh, sh- shit, we've gone over 15 minutes. <laughs> cut it. Cut it now. Yeah. Or maybe it just got more problematic and they went, shit, <laughs> shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, Justine Littlewood... Yeah. ...is a person of colour. Yes. I'm not going to assume her ethnicity... Mm-hmm. Well, she's mixed race. I think so. Her dad's, well, her dad's white. white. Yeah. Um, there's a line early on where Tracy compares herself to a slave <laughs> to Justine Littlewood. <laughs> Did you not clock? It's around, <laughs> and it's around the gum bit, which is where she steals Justine's gum, which is the most fantastic metaphor for imperialism <laughs> I have ever heard. We were wrong to make such snap judgments about this episode of Tracy Beaker. Yeah. It's got a lot of layers. Yes. It's in- inquiring about <laughs> society's inbuilt racism, Mickey Mouse clocks, yep. feline lady clocks. <laughs> There's a lot. There's a lot. In Tracy Beaker. That I-, I feel like maybe two episodes wasn't enough. Yeah, I think, I think we, should... we may have to come back to this later. We may have Can to. you remember any... Any episodes of Tracy Beaker that you used to watch? Because I remember a few iconic moments. I think, so, I do remember that episode, but I think my main period of watching Tracy Beaker was when she was with Cam. Yes, and she set Cam's kitchen on fire. Yes. And there was Rio Wellard, where's my Maroon 5 CD? Rio Wellard. The Maroon 5 CD. There we go, I'm back on board. Yeah, um, yeah. there's that bit where she does like, oh, when Cam comes around for the first time, and she wants her to adopt her. Yes. And she puts this horrible amount of makeup on, and she looks <gasps> like a clown. I think that's soon in the episodes. <gasps> I think it's in series oh, one. Oh, wait, it's in series one? I think so, because Peter's okay. definitely still there. And she's in, she looks also very young. Okay. And she puts his clown makeup on, and everyone laughs at her, and she's like... <laughs> and then Cam's like, Tracy, I want to, I want to foster you. <gasps> and there's the maybe two or three episodes where someone bangs their head or has, like, a nightmare or whatever. Uh-huh. And there's, like, dream episodes. Oh. There's one where she Wait, makes, it's already an acid trip. Well, absolutely. Well, there's the, the one where there's a musical episode in Elaine the Pain... <gasps> Is like well, we've yet to see Elaine the pain, so I think we do have to. I think we should press on later on to see Elaine. Yes, Elaine's like running this like prison facility, and Cam's there. I remember that. No telly, no jelly. I remember that. And then Duke (laughs) does. Duke serves up porridge and throws it at people. Yeah, lovely bubbly porridge. They sing songs about porridge. I don't remember the songs, but I remember this. It is a great time. Um, yeah, and there's all those children that we haven't met yet. Like, Dolly is there. I remember Dolly. Um, just, there's the little girl who doesn't say anything. The Wellards, mm. as aforementioned. Wellard. Crash, Lesbian Jackie. <laughs> there's... A full name. <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot yeah. of series. There are. So many. Mm-hmm. And I think we've got quite an adventure ahead of us. Yes. And um, we do also have a little bit left of Ribena. Yeah. Would you like some Ribena? I would. It's my experience. <laughs> oh, it's... Spilt some on my trousers. This high sugar content that's not going to come out anytime soon. Mm, I think there's just one question left to ask about Tracy Beaker. What's that question, please? Is it camp? <laughs> Tracy Beaker would have been invited to the Met Gala. There we go. Tracy Beaker is the embodiment of camp. Cheers to that. Cheers to Cheers. Tracy Beaker and camp and to Strawberry Ribena. Cheers.